So hello everybody, my name is Roy Marriott. I'm working using Solutions Focus in the world of software development, in the world of agile software development. And what I've been discovering is that in this world there are a number of problems that crop up time after time after time. A couple of issues that people really want help with. One of those issues is resistance to change. People who uh, in the world of being scrum masters, agile coaches, leading agile transformations, even C-suite people wanting their whole organization to become agile, um, want to make that happen and find they get resistance, they get pushback. I think Solutions Focus is a really great way of helping with that in a way that many, if not all of you, will already be really familiar with. So this, in a way, is making a bridge between some things you already know and ways that people really, really need your help, to be honest. Um, zone of productive change is kind of the answer. Um, it may be, if you think about it enough, it may be that that picture is enough. Um, that picture is the key to it, but I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to explain that just yet. I'm going to start with a story. Um, who has read um, Paul Z. Jackson, Mark McCurgo's book, The Solutions Focus? So those of you will already know this story. Fortunately, not everyone's hand up, went up, so I can tell you the story. That's not an authentic photograph, by the way. That's the best thing I could find on the internet. This was back in the 1980s, I believe. Um, chemical factory in Italy. Joint venture, AstraZeneca, another, another organization. And the problem they had was that people had got so used to the hazards, so used to handling these really, really dangerous chemicals, that they forgot about the hazard. They forgot about the danger. And they were just, they, were, they weren't wearing their safety goggles. Obviously, this is a really big issue. Management absolutely wanted them to wear the safety goggles. So they tried everything they know. They tried, well, what do you think they tried? Telling them to wear it. Telling them to wear it. Punishing, Punishing them if they don't. Incentivizing. Incentivizing, yeah. I'm not quite sure if they did that, but yeah. <laughs> certainly certainly the, 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 the carrot was used, yeah. Those, those warning, those posters that go up everywhere, you know, you go into the toilet and you see a poster that tells you to do something, you know, all that kind of stuff. It had all been done. Managers had been banging the point home at meeting after meeting. Wasn't working. So they asked a solutions-focused question. What do you think the question might have been? When does this solution happen? In other words, when does what we want happen, even a little bit? When do Italian men wear glasses when it's not strictly necessary? Branded and pretty. Branded and pretty, yep. <laughs> cool shades, as we, we used to say in the 1980s. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that was the solution, yeah? So, an example of how to generate change without generating resistance. Yeah? Let's go into that in a bit more detail. So, who am I? I told you I'm Roy. Um, my background was in tech. Um, I first started earning money in software at the age of 15 uh, in 1981. <laughs> Oof, that's a uh, long time ago. Um, I, I did a degree in computer science. I've worked for those companies you've heard of, have consulted for those companies you've heard of. Um, but then, early in the 1990s, I discovered actually I'm much like working with people. Um, I was spending too much of my time with computers, not enough time with people. It's ironic given how much time I was, I've been spending, you know, with PowerPoint and all that these days. You know the problem. But that was that was my background. That's where I came from. Um, 
so recently what I've been doing is bringing all of this together, bringing together all the solutions focused coaching, all this kind of stuff, together into the world of software and seeing how many parallels there are between agile software development and solutions focus. They really, really fit beautifully. Um, lots of people I've worked with. So what are we going to do? Um, first of all, we'll look at models for change and you'll get a bit of an introduction to agile in, as part of that. Um, the zone of productive change, where is it that change can be at its most effective? Um, and how we go about influencing that zone. Um, very quickly, a seven-step model for generating change without generating resistance. Bear in mind, this is a 60-minute version of a 90-minute workshop that I normally do at Agile conferences, um, and you know most of this already. Um, and then you'll get a chance to think about a change you would like to generate, maybe in a personal context, maybe in a professional context, um, and we'll think about how you, in that context, can find that zone of productive change. Yeah? So it gets practical as we move on. Um, who's seen this before? OK, a few of you. So this is basically, during the 1990s, there was a huge amount of thought going into how can we make software development more effective? Um, and lots of answers were being discovered to that. So there was a big divergence, which all kind of converged in, if memory serves, 2001? Um, in, a, in an astonishing meeting. It was two or three days meeting in a ski resort. 17 opinionated, highly opinionated white males reached an agreement on four value statements and 12 values. I think that in itself is quite remarkable. What's even more remarkable is this is still something that is referred to constantly in the agile software community. You know, it's still a document that has a lot of life and authority today. Um, so just very briefly, um, I think my next... Yeah, so these are the four values. And the way it's phrased in this manifesto is, we value this over that. So it's not saying we don't care about this, it's saying we care more about this. So basically what this is saying is if you're a software team, then you will, um, you know, we are discovering ways of working as software teams that work much better if we value this, if we really value the individuals and the interactions. If we really value, working software was what they were saying, but if we generalize that, because I know we're not all in software, incremental delivery is essentially what they're talking about here. So instead of, you know, back in those days, software came as, you know, a CD-ROM, if I'm remembering correctly, maybe even before that. Maybe, maybe those were, that was in the days where you got a stack of floppy disks. Um, yeah? Um, and that would come, what, every couple of years when the software was updated? Today, software is updated, you know, hourly. Yeah? Certainly, you know, we're talking every couple of weeks. Um, so the pace, the pace of iteration is, is increasing. And that's what this is all about. We value that because we get feedback so much more quickly. We can deliver value so much more effectively. Third value, collaboration. Fourth value, responding to change. Um, as solutions-focused practitioners, any of this look familiar? <laughs> yeah? Um, but much of the Agile community hasn't, hasn't got the memo yet. So much of the Agile community is still doing this kind of thing. Uh, especially, you know, if you look at the big organizations that from the top down are transforming to Agile. So it's like we're going to follow process, we're going to roll out Agile, we're going to do it from the top down and we are going to follow the plan and you are going to be Agile in three months. Anyone spot the contradiction? <laughs> yeah? So, you know, and as, as we know, what you exemplify, what you demonstrate communicates much more than what you say. So, it's such a mixed message. So many problems arise out of this. Now, you, you don't need to see this. Um, you know this already. You know, solutions focus is such a good fit. So basically, agile is, is how you deliver software. Solutions focus is how you deliver change 
in a way that's agile. So let's think about this. What is the zone of productive change? Um, let's, I'm going to talk about a scenario where you've got the organization wants something. So imagine you are an agile, and so by the way, an agile coach isn't a coach in the sense that we would understand it. Yeah? An agile coach does a lot of training. An agile coach is an expert in the field. And we have a session on it tomorrow that Rolf is going to tell you. So fantastic. Um, I recommend going to that. Um, but just for the sake of clarifying here, um, when I say agile coach, I mean you want, you want a particular change to come about. So you might like to think about it as a manager wanting a particular change to come about. From this point of view, that works just as well. Um, or, you know, a, an external consultant being told to bring something about. Customers, let's not forget customers. Um, f that is one thing that Agile is really good at, remembering customers. The customer wants something or needs something or would value something or would pay more money for something. That's our second thing. And you can see, yeah, they're, they're different, but there is some overlap. If, the, if there's no overlap, we're, we're in the wrong business. Um, the team wants something. Um, and again, hopefully, there's some kind of overlap. Now, when I say wants here, I'm talking about the change they want, not, ju not, not just any old thing they want, the change they want. So, fortunately, as a result of doing all this work, I have some really good friends in the world of software development who like playing, one of whom, um, thank you, Maria Paula, came up with this piece of software, um, the zone of productive change. So, um, one thing to notice is that if what the team wants shrinks, that zone of productive change disappears. Sorry, I think I may have missed, missed a step here in my explanation. This, the intersection between what everyone wants, is the zone of productive change. Yeah? Um, is that completely obvious? Just to check, I'm getting lots of nods. Explain back to me why that's the most productive zone in which to do change. Because everyone will support it, yeah? It's as simple as that, isn't it? Everyone's going to engage in that point. Everyone's going to engage in it, right. Everyone's going to support it, everyone's going to engage in it, yeah? Everybody wins. Everybody oh. wins. Yeah, well, they, hope, they, they, they anticipate they'll win. They, they want it, so, yeah, there's a good chance that they will, yeah? So, um, it doesn't take much for that zone to disappear, yeah? It, it could be because what the, what the team wants has shrunk for some reason. It could be because what the team wants has actually moved away from what the organization wants for some reason. Yeah? But obviously what we want is to bring the team back into alignment with the organization and the customer and to expand their range of what change they want. So, what I'd like you to do in groups of about five is to answer this question. How can we influence that circle? How can we influence the circle of what the team wants? Um, two by two grid, anybody? Um, how can we make the... Um, let's go this way. How can we make the circle... Um, bigger versus smaller and how can we um, move it closer and how can we move it further away yeah you get the idea so in your groups I'd like you to, to, to make one of these charts and populate it with answers of things you can do to, to move that circle around is that all clear Closer to, well, move to the left, so closer to what the organization wants. Not to the customer? Um, and organize, yeah, organization and customer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah good, good point. Yeah, uh, well, this is, this is what can you do. So if you're, if, if you're representing the organization in some way, what can you do to bring this circle this way or this way or to make it bigger? Yeah? Good. So... How should we do this? Let's, um, groups of five I've said. 
So if you would like to make yourself into groups of five, send one person up here to grab a pen and a um, piece of flip chart paper. I just want, I'm hearing the same question from a couple of groups, including you at the back, so I'd just like to clarify something about what the bigger and smaller means, yeah? So this circle is the sum total of all the, th all the change that the team is, wants, even, even wants a little bit, yeah? So Dominic was just saying, or Dominic's team, I'm not sure, um, you know, what if they really, really focused on one particular change? Does that make the circle small or big? Well, I'd say if they, if they only want that change and they, every, they want, absolutely want everything else to stay the same, then that makes it small. But if they're really focused on one change, and they also are interested in another change, but it's not the priority right now, then that makes the circle big. Does that help? Yeah? So, so basically what we're talking about is the, si the, the circle is the, 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 the change they want. If it's closer in, that means it's more aligned with what the change the organization wants. If it's further back, then it's less aligned. Another question at all? Can I have an example? For example, it doesn't make the team circle small if they want to want another coffee machine. Coffee machine. It's a small change. That's nothing. Nothing. They don't want to change anything this is, else. This is they, this is a, an area. So so that would be a point within this circle. So the team wants a new coffee machine. Uh, does the organisation want a new coffee machine? No. Yeah. Not that For example, no. <laughs> For example, no. Okay, so it's out. It's it's in this zone, but it's not in that zone. Uh, does the customer want? The customer doesn't care, to be honest. So so it's it's somewhere in here. Yeah. So that's one point. If maybe there's another change. For example, what other change might the team want? Less hierarchy. Does the organization want less hierarchy? <laughs> well, in this example. No. 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 OK. So that's another point. And the customer doesn't care again. So that's another point here. Yeah? So the size of this circle is like how many points there are. And if they yeah? Need, if they are not able to get those changes, you, you're saying it's getting smaller. No. No, this is purely, this is the change. Well, this is about what they want, mm -hmm. not about whether they get it at all. Um, so if, if a team doesn't want anything to change whatsoever, the circle disappears. Yeah? If the team only, you know, only wants tiny, tiny change, then it's a very, very small circle. If the team is just like wide open, yeah, bring it on. We're completely flexible. We'll, yes. We want to change in every way. Anything, any change here is totally been. Unfocused. Well, well, no, 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 no. We 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 we're, we're ready for lots of change. Then it's huge. So it's not about focus. It's about what change you want. Five more minutes just to explore. See if you can get something in each quadrant. Okay. So let's let's pool our thinking. We've we've had this experiment running. We've been thinking about this in five different ways. Let's see what we've come up with. So I'm going to suggest um, that we start with the team wants a wider range of change. So this is the circle getting bigger. What ways can you, from the organization's point of view, 
increase the size of that circle? What have you, what have you got? Increased autonomy. Give them a vision and a purpose of the work, which is aligned with the, what the customer wants. So giving more value to the customer with the product. Or, yeah. So give them a vision yeah. that's aligned with the customer. Yeah? yeah? Cool. Have let them co-create a vision. Let them co-create a vision. Right. <laughs> let them know the customer. Yeah, let them get to know the customer. Let's let's take it all. <laughs> let's not. Let's not. Let's not. Yeah. Okay. You have to understand that. Well, it it gets bigger if team is involved, if team is thinking about. Yeah. But not not definitively on the needs of organization and of the customer, but just on their own ideas. I think getting to get closer mean to bring to link them together. Though. Come back and say. Okay, go. On. I see both. Um, what would you say? I saw that first as well. But maybe if the team can identify with the customer and the product, they have more interest in growing. Yes. They are more motivated to going more into detail of different technologies, seeing more value in themselves to do more, and are not narrow minded then. I just am here to do what I have to So that might well be a good example of something that make, creates a wider range of change and more aligned, is what you're saying. So that, we, what we're saying here is that introducing them to the customer is, a way of, is something you can do in this quadrant. Yeah? Other, other things we can do to influence the size or position of the circle? Give space for personal and professional growth. Yeah, great. Where would you, where would you put that? The team to also become bigger. Uh huh. Great. So up here somewhere. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Improve creativity. Improve uh, room for creativity. Room for creativity. What what is that like? Literally, you know, the creativity room, or what what does that look like? <laughs> like in uh, workshops, open spaces, the now. Right. So workshops and open spaces that allow for creativity. Um, what else? I've seen, I'm seeing more things written on sheets, so there's more to come. I guess sometimes the organizational structure is not changing, ah. but the team, this moves it away from the organization, but you can still spark that teams want to change, so they want the personal development, uh -huh. but not giving the space from a company perspective moves it away because they right. still want to develop. Yeah, so no, so no space to change, adapt or develop. Um, the team is likely to be less, less aligned or less flexible? I think it's less aligned because all okay. people yeah. I've never met people who said I'm not interested in developing right. myself. So uh, <laughs> there are some. People, people get jaded, believe me. <laughs> Lucky you. Lucky me. Let's, let's, let's just take a couple more. What, what, are, what other ways have we got to influence this circle? Hierarchy as well. Right. So too much hierarchy makes it smaller. Too much hierarchy makes it smaller. Yeah, right. 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 So if it's if it's basically if it's genuinely two way communication, then it creates more flex more flexibility or more alignment? Or both? Both. Yeah? both. Great. So it's in this quadrant. Yeah. Cool. Great. Unless maybe down here. You get the idea. Essentially, you know, you might even just take away from this, it's possible to influence the size of that zone. Yeah? And that makes a big difference. Because, like, I'm, like I was saying, just to repeat myself, it's so easy to make that zone disappear. So hopefully, that also means it's so easy to make it appear or grow bigger. So perhaps, when it comes to bringing about change, rather than saying, 
you change, you focus your energy on increasing the size of the zone of productive change. When you say productive change, you mean changing in organizational change? Or also team software development team changes in software? I'm... Is it about how we work together? Or... Okay, that's interesting. I mean, I was thinking about the way we work together, because that's what I do. <laughs> uh, what do you think? So, do you think, in terms of the technical practices, do you think it also creates more flexibility there? I saw that failing as well to do the same through reasons. That's why I was asking yeah. myself what changes. Yeah. Change request in the software, which yeah. doesn't meet the team because it isn't aligned with the others. So away. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it seems to fit in the same way. So. Because if I want to change the software, the software doesn't help me to work in the way I want to work. So it's the same for me. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be emerging. You know, it, maybe it's just the same. You know, whether it's the technical thing, whether it's the process, whether it's how we work together. Okay, let's move on to the second bit. We've got um, what twenty minutes. Um, so. We've just done that. So, um, I, prom I promised you a seven-step model. Um, this, won't, this won't be anything that's particularly new to you guys. Um, but let's, let's, let's look anyway. Um, so, first step, I would say, and maybe this is the new bit, find the zone. Yeah? If you're looking to bring about change in an organization, find, find the zone of productive change as being the first step. Um, and I think this is subtly different to finding customers for change. Only subtly. Um, I'll leave, I leave it to you to think about what the difference is. So basically, find the desires in each of these areas. Find the overlap. Engage the motivation. Um, then, invite progress in a solutions-focused way. Um, Outcome resources and action, um, it, I'll be talking more about that tomorrow in terms of where we focus in solutions focus, but you know, insert your own favorite solutions focus change model here. Um, and then of course, iterate on it. Review the progress and repeat. Yeah, as I say, very, very familiar in this SF context. Um, so, I have an exercise for you. <laughs> yeah? Um, and I'd like you just to start personally. Take a sheet of A4 paper, I would recommend, um, and mark it up like this. Left-hand column. Well, well think, think about a change you want to bring about, yeah? Um, where you would like someone else to change in some way. Um, that's the overall topic. That's the platform, if you will. And then two columns here. What's the change you want? So think about a future perfect. Think about the specific detail of the change that you would like to bring about. Then think about them and make some guesses about the sort of change they would like and brainstorm them as well. And then at the end, I mean, obviously, step, <laughs> step three here is actually ask them. We can't, I'm assuming, do that here in this group right now. Um, but then step four will be what's the overlap. But for now, let's just do this bit. So let's, let's take three minutes of silent reflection time just to, to populate this. What, what, what are the details of the change that you want? What are the details of the change that they want? So before we go on to looking at the overlap, or well maybe that's already obvious, I'm just curious to know where you've got to. So actually, I'll tell you what, would you, would you like to come into one circle again? So what have you found so far going through that exercise of thinking about the change you want and thinking about the change the other person wants? 
If anyone's brave enough to share an example, then that would, that would be lovely. Uh, the company might think uh, work hard, and the team might think play hard. OK. Sure. Is this, is this your example? That's so. by two diverse. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? What doing? That's okay. Doing, doing, doing this exercise, brainstorming as many different things as you can think of that you want and that they might want. What started to emerge for you? What are you, what are you discovering, if anything? But I know much better what I want than what they want. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Any any surprises? Is it is it? So it is already making a difference for you, just reflecting on these questions. Yeah? Great. It's the same thing, but maybe uh, using different words. Ah, now that's interesting. Are you prepared to tell us, give us an example? Uh, well, it would be, one would be, you know, uh, need more integrity from the person, but the person then might feel that they want more autonomy. OK. So it's kind of get that same thing. Right, so right. Trust, but from a different angle. Okay, okay. Similar to it. Right, very interesting. So, so autonomy, integrity, the overlap is trust. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah, that's even better. Thanks. <laughs> that, 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 that's what I heard. I love, the, I love the process of creative misunderstanding. It's so good, isn't it? Okay. What I'd like you to do next is to pair up and... If you're willing, talk about the example and discuss what the overlap could be in this situation. Start to bring out the, okay, this is, this is what's wanted here, this is what's wanted here, so this might be the overlap. It might not be the main thing you want, but you know, that could be outside by the way, but there might still be some overlap. Yeah? Stand up. Let's form two lines down the middle. And this, the person you're facing is your partner for this exercise. It's that simple. So uh, just, just uh, we'll take three minutes to compare notes and explore the zone of positive change in your case. As we finish the exercise now, you might like to thank your partners, take your seats. So again, I'm interested in what you've learnt. Comparing notes with your partner, exploring the examples maybe. What have you discovered about this process that might help you maybe to move in a direction, even a tiny bit, of bringing some kind of positive change about. What have you learned? Ask them. Ask them, OK. <laughs> right, yeah, ask them what they actually want. For me, it was interesting because I, I prepared in this exercise. I, I got to stop part in the preparation of the workshop I have with the team next week. And it was interesting to see, OK, I asked them already. Uh -huh. I know what I want because I represent the organization. Right. I know what they want. Yeah. But I'm not sure whether what they told me what they want is really what they want. Ah, So for yes. me, the, what's yes. the overlap is, in fact, the outcome of the work. So finding that overlap, yes, yes that's yes. A, such a good answer. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to run a workshop to make sure you really do understand what they and they really understand what they yeah, want, and yeah, exactly. And then find that overlap, find where there's a change that's aligned. Thank you. We found in, in our discussion, you were saying, yeah, you just <laughs> <laughs> they're collaborative. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it about if, if we, we we moved up the level of needs, yeah, and that then suddenly brought together the overlap. Okay. So, Again, it's about 
the strategy and the actual goal or need and whatever. So at certain lower level, it was strategy and they did, don't match. Yep. But on a higher level, because right. the needs where you can find match. Right. So the strategies weren't overlapping, but the needs were. So how did you move up? What, what sort of, can you, can you say so an example? And what else? OK, OK. And what else? One more question. What do you need that for? What do you need that for? Right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. And I think it's necessary to step back from my own needs yeah, yeah. to yeah. listen carefully uh -huh. to get on the higher level. Because if I only hear in comparison to my own needs, right. they need, right. it's hard to find the overlap. OK. So I have to. Stop only thinking from my point right. of view to, to reach the next level. Okay, so stop. So temporarily, stop thinking from your point of view, so you can really listen to what they want, so you stand a better chance of stepping up to that higher level where there's the overlap. Nice, nice. Anything from this side of the, yeah? We had like really contradicting points of view, what we want and they want. Yeah. But then found that trust is something that is a glue for the first step for what's in common end. That ah. the company needs to trust the team and the team needs to trust the company to allow that common. Okay. To okay. Be effective at change. There's an interesting little distinction there. So there's what's wanted and what's needed. So I'm interested there in whether there's a desire for there to be more trust on either side. Or if it's just necessary. There is a desire, but normally I think in a cognitive environment like work, there you need to dig deep to get there. Okay, okay. So, so it sounds like finding that overlap, there might be more work to do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> other, other learnings? Ah. And, and, and that would happen this clarification. <laughs> right. Again. Right. And as the time continues to again, right. this is going to change. It's, it's going to change. Right. So I get two points out of that. Firstly, it's a process of dialogue to discover this. In a way, I set you up with a bad exercise. Yeah? To try, for you to try and work it out now isn't really going to work. Although maybe it primes the pump for when you go into the actual situation. You're at least better aware of the, uh, their perspective and able to ask the questions. So, it's, so it is a process. And that process isn't just like, now let's find it, because these wants will change. You know, those three circles, the zone of productive change, they, they change over time anyway, even if we don't try and influence them. Yeah? Good. It's lunchtime. <laughs> so let's leave it there. <laughs> Thank you very much for all your engagement. Really appreciate it.